Let's start with prayer. <coughs> it's going to be there. Father God, we thank you that you love us very much. That you have made yourself known to us and that we are, we are your children. Thank you that we love to worship you. And we pray that we will be able to pass on our faith, our inspiration, our worship to our children. This is our greatest desire. That they may know you too. So help us to think how we can pass that faith onto them in the best way possible. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. So this morning we had an example of worshipping with children and intergenerationally. And we had the teenagers involved as well. Oh, we have, um, sorry, you have the teenagers, the young people were involved. Okay. And it's, it's tricky to do a service where there is something for everyone all the time, but we, we kind of involve everyone as much as we can. And we've been exploring ways that we can involve children in our worship services because if we don't, then they, they find it harder to feel like they want to join our church, actually. And our worship services are really important for growing our children's faith as well. Because otherwise, children come into a worship service and they say, there's nothing here for me. Mm. And they switch their brains off. And sometimes they don't switch them back on again. When they get older. And so if we can involve them in creative ways, it really makes a huge difference. So we get them thinking thought to go there or stop on the hot, then we have skipped out the molly. Actually, the churches in America that are involving children in their worship services every week are those that are growing the fastest. And there's lots of reasons for that. Because if you have children coming and they are happy, they want to bring their friends, their family members. There are parents who will drive past many churches to go to a church service that will involve their children. Er and maybe you're a grandparent bringing your grandchildren because your children no longer come to church. Med, med því að ekki. But when that child is involved in a service, they say, Mommy, Daddy, please come today. You know, often we think that worship has to be just the way we've been doing it for the last hundred years. But if we look in the Bible, we see that the way people worship changed quite a lot. So, at the beginning, they worshipped in a garden. And then at other times, they worshipped in a desert. And they built altars of stone. And then they made the tabernacle. And the tabernacle was filled with many different ways to understand God. You know, God knows that he made us with all five senses. And when he created the tabernacle service, he appealed to all of those senses. Because people didn't have a Bible to read in those days. But God knew that when they could experience him through all of their senses, um, they built their relationship with him. And then all the feasts that he gave his people were also ways to experience God through many different, um, many different means. And then we find Jesus preaching on a hill. 
Við sjáum að Jesús predikar á hæð. And he would say, hey look, there's a little lost sheep over there. Let me tell you about the lost sheep. Og sér hann þannig að einhvern sauð sem er farin villu vegar og hann segir, nú skal ég segja ykkur. Og look at these flowers. Og sjáum blómin. Let me tell you that God cares for you much more than he cares for these flowers. Og þið veit ég það, ég ætla að segja ykkur það að Guð elskar ykkur eða ann ykkur meira heldur en blómunum, þannig. And then people worshipped in homes. Og þannig og hann kom tilbeislunni á heimilin. And actually nobody in the Bible worshipped the way most of us worship every Sabbath today. Og það er í sjálfu sér enginn sem tilbáð á þeim tíma eins og við gerum í dag. And Jesus had a special view of children and their worship. Og Jesús hann leit sérstaklega á börnin og þeirra nálgun. If you have your Bibles, look at Matthew 18, 1 to 7. Ef við með Biblíuna, Matthews 18, 1 til 7. In fact, this, this whole chapter has many ideas about um, our, our way to nurture children's faith. We don't have time to explore all of this today. But read it when you get home. Here are some of the key points. Children are central in God's kingdom. When people said to him, who's the greatest in the kingdom? What did he do? He took a little child and he put it in the middle of the circle and said, this is the most important. There's a lot we can learn from that. Adults need to learn actually how to become like little children. Jesus said, unless you become like little children, you won't understand my kingdom. He didn't say, children, you've got to become like grown-ups. Because that is not possible. But we've all been children. And God wants to engage with us as his children. Og Guð vill nálgast okkur sem börnin sín. And whenever we welcome children, we welcome Jesus. Og þegar við meðtökum börn, þá meðtökum við Jesum. Whoever welcomes a little child in my name welcomes me. Því hann sagði, sá sem tekur um áti barni, einu lítt barni, hann tekur um áti mér. And so we see just how important children are to Jesus. Og þannig að sjá við hversu mikilvæg börn eru Jesu. And how central they are to his way of doing church. Og hversu þau eru þunga með því, öllu því er varðar hann. Now, if you have a pen and paper, you can draw a circle or you can just imagine it in your head. So if you drew a circle that was this church and drew a dot on there to show where you think children are in this church, how important they are. If someone came into this church from outside, would they see children at the center of this church? Or would they see them nearly at the center? Or towards the edge? Or hopefully not outside of that circle? So are the children's needs important? Or are they pushed to the edge? What I saw today is this is a church that loves to involve its children. Það sem ég sé hér er að kirkjan hún er mikið fyrir það að auka þáttöku barnana. So I feel like I'm preaching to the converted. Svo mér finnst eins og ég sé að tala við þá sem skilja og eru það sem ég sé þá að vera. And it makes me really happy when I see children involved in this way. Og ég er mjög hamingi sem ánað að sjá börnin þannig þáttakendur. But maybe you know a, church, a child who's probably on the edge of your church or somebody's church. It's a child who really doesn't want to be there. The one who really wants to run around and hates to sit still for two hours. Maybe there's a little child who's always getting into trouble. And when he comes to church, he says, no, shh, stop. So imagine a child like this and wonder how this child experienced last Sabbath. Probably not in your church. 
But there are some ch children when they come to church, these are the feelings they have. And and í í sumum tilvikum þá er þá er þetta þannig sem barninu líður. They feel like it's boring, they're lonely. They feel þetta er, sad. Þetta er dreplegilegt, þau eru einmanna, þau eru þau eru þau eru uh, frustrerð. It's a day when people are always telling them off. Hér er alltaf verið að skamma þeim. And the chairs are uncomfortable. Og sætin vond. And they, they, there's nothing there to do or see. Og það er ekkert hann að gera eða, eða sjá. And what would it take for this church to welcome every child and make it the best place to be? Og hvað þarf kirkjan að gera til þess að, að barninu líði á sem bestan hátt? Where every child, every person, every teenager when they come to this church knows that they are special and loved. Þegar hver á einn unglingur, barn og unglingur finnur það að hann á sérstætt sæti. They're loved by God and they're loved by as many as pos people as possible in this church. Hann finnur að Guð elskar hann og, og, og með samfélagið með tekur hann. And they feel safe and happy and loved og and wanted. Er, þeir fyrir, fyrir, finna til öryggis og, mm. og, og, og ánægju. Do you know, every Sabbath is evangelistic for the children in our church and the Þegar teenagers. Sérku kvíldadagur er bóðun á, á þessum vettvangi. And the new people. Að fá inn unglinga og nýtt, nýtt fólk. And what would it be like if we understood that every Sabbath is an amazing opportunity for evangelism? Og ef, ef við legðum nú að slá það að, að kvíldadagurinn er ótrúlegt takið færi til bóðunar. To win a child's, a teen's, an adult's heart for Jesus. Að, að vinna barn mm. unglings eða, <coughs> eða, eða já, og, og þeirra ungur til Cause... Jesu. Because quite often we have forgotten that our purpose here is to bring people to Jesus. But I've been in quite a few churches around uh, England, England where if I was a child I would never want to go back. And that makes my heart break for those children. So we mentioned that churches that actively involve children, that, that helps them to grow. Should I tell you how most children experience worship services? Now, if I had the opportunity here, I would do this to you. Um, I sit adults on a on a table facing a blank wall. Because when you sit on a table, it's like being a child. Your feet are not supported by the floor and your back is not supported in the chair. And I'll tell you, if you sat on a table for an hour, you wouldn't like it very much. You'd soon start to hurt. And you would fidget and move because your body needs to. And I'm putting you facing a blank wall because most children can't see anything interesting in the church service. And then I play them a sermon in Chinese for an hour. And I want you to imagine that someone took you to their church and everyone sat on tables facing blank walls and made you listen to a sermon in Chinese for an hour. And then they say, oh, wouldn't you want to come back next week? What would you say? I mean, you have a choice. So what if someone said, oh, by the way, you have to do this for the next 10 years? Uh, also, yeah, and that's often what we do to children in some of our churches. And that does not create in them a love for the church as they understand it. Some of the problem with church, actually, is there's too many words. Because most children under 12, although they can learn in different ways, they prefer to learn by doing and by seeing. <coughs> and actually 70% of adults prefer to learn this way as well. But about 
80, and that's, that's being generous, about, usually about 95% of our church service is words. And 90, so 95% of the things that are in church are in the church. I think it's because church was created by theologians and they just love words. And I think everybody else will love words too. So it's prayers are words, songs are words, sermon is words, scripture reading is words. So it's all salmar, bænir, predikun, þetta er allt byggir á orðum. Sometimes the only thing you do that isn't words is money in the offering. Og það er hinn sem þú gerir í sjálfu sér það er þegar þú gefur eitthvað í körfuna. And so we need to be aware of how verbal our, our service is and how that's not how children learn. And one of the biggest questions is, will this Sabbath, will this church service bring them one step closer to Jesus or push them one step further so away? And we can decide that. We can think about that every single time. And think about how does this church service bring children closer to God? I wonder what you would like the children to experience when they come to your church each week. And I'm sure from what I've seen here that the children have a really lovely time. And yes, yeah, here up, but no leader well. But what are your wishes and hopes for the children? What do you most want them to experience each week when they're here? Do you have any ideas to share? What would you say? Do you have any wishes and hopes for them? Maybe curiosity. They'd be curious. And why why is that so important? To want to learn. And to know God better, yes. To be curious, to learn God better. So knowing God better is another hope, isn't it? Another wish we have for them. What else? Sorry? That they know that God loves them. That they know that God loves them. For them to know that. That is really important. We have a friend in America and his goal for every church service is that everyone who leaves his church in the morning should know that God loves them and at least one other person loves them. And the last time I spoke to him, his church had 5,000 members and they were building an extension. Because he wanted to base his church on the great commandment. Of loving God and loving others. So this, here are some ideas of how to put children more centrally in our churches. First of all, the Holy Spirit is working on our children's lives and all of our lives. And we can ask the Holy Spirit to inspire us. How can we help our children to experience God's love every week, our teenagers to experience this too? And then how can we actually look at the children and young people through the eyes of Jesus? What does he see when he sees them? What does he want them to experience? How much does he love them? He was willing to sacrifice his life to show how much he loved them. What are we willing to sacrifice for our children and young people so that they can experience God? Because 
can think about the sermon topic more and think how it could be made more interesting and relevant to the children. You don't have to do something like I did every single week. But just think, what can we do so that this, these children can take the main message home for them? Wonder about your, your, how can you adapt your message, at least one aspect of the service, to make it more child-friendly. This is a lost sheep, by the way. And be flexible. You know, whenever we involve children, there's a capacity for things to go slightly wobbly. <laughs> and things don't always go to plan. The most important thing is that there is someone there that protects the child and supports them so they don't feel shame and sadness. So they feel that whatever they did, even if it went a little bit wrong, it was still wonderful and a gift to God. We can be brave and invite feedback from the children and young people about our church services. You know, when I go through the airports, there's lots of these little things with four buttons. How happy were you with this today? Mm. There was one church and it had, gave every child a button when they left church. And there were three jars. I really liked it today. I didn't like it today. And it was like it was okay. And so And the children could put their button in whichever jar. And we can ask our young people what would make the service more meaningful to you. What would what would you like to see in there that will make it a place you want to be? That makes it worthwhile getting out of bed on a Saturday morning. We need to listen to their voices. Because quite often we don't ask them about how they are experiencing church and what they would like. We can um, use our children's gifts whenever possible. And it was lovely to see that happen here this morning. It was really special to see the children involved in, in small ways, using their gifts and talents for God. We also need to help our children be part of serving the community. <coughs> so it's not just about the church service, it's about other things that your church does. And think about the needs of the children at all times and at every church event. I've been at some church services that lasted three hours. There was not one thing for the children. And when I said, what are you going to do for the children? They said, oh, there isn't any time for them. And then when the children are uncomfortable and it's they're, they're hungry and there's nothing for them, then they get told off. Mm. We need to have someone who will speak up for the children's needs in the meetings that your church has. Mm. Someone who will always keep their needs in mind and the young people's needs in mind and say, what about them? What's it going to be like for them when we do this? Mm -hmm. It can be challenging to involve children in church. But we need to keep going. Because they're an important part of our church and they need to know that. And 
And the more central they feel to our church, the more involved they feel, the more they will want to be part of this for their whole life. So what can we do? So what can we do? Often there are some very simple things that don't take a lot of time and effort. Invite children to choose the hymns and songs. And not just do that, but actually to come and say why they chose it. Because this helps them to think about their faith, think about their choices and to express them. And if they're too shy to come and say why they chose it, someone else can read out what they wrote. Or you can have a PowerPoint slide saying why they chose it just before the hymn. It's useful if we can use at least one children's song every service. Because that says to them, you're important, we want to have something for you too. Mm. Let them play their own instruments as they did today. Or maybe some are not so musical. But maybe they can draw some pictures to go on the PowerPoint to illustrate a song. When my son was a teenager, he loved to create PowerPoints with the best background for the best songs and just make it look beautiful. And that was his way of giving to the, the service. And so we can involve them in other creative ways. I know one church where after the children's story they sing two lively children's songs. And they have lots of actions and instruments they can bang and make a huge noise. And it gets all the wiggles out of them before they have the sermon. We can also invite children to be part of our prayer time. Um, and we, had, we have one thing we do with um, four gift bags at the front of the church. And we have thank you, sorry, please and praise. And every bag is a different colour. And all the congregation have four pieces of paper in the same colours as the bags. So all the children know that the um, thank you it's always yellow and they put it in the yellow bag. So even small children who can't read can put the prayers in the right bag. Mm. And people just write one sentence of praise, a thank you, a please, a sorry. And then we'll hold up one of the bags, say it's the praise bag. And we say, Father God, this is all our praise this morning. You know everything we've written here. And, and here's a sample of what we said. And then children or grown-ups can read just a few of them. And then we do the same for, um, for all the other bags. It's a way to involve children. One day we had a thank you prayer and children brought things to church they wanted to thank God for and put them on a table. So find ways that they can be involved in the prayer. It's good if uh, children can get involved in the offerings as well. Mm. Oops. 
And uh, nowadays, I think we've made some, uh, the TD, we've made some tithe envelopes that children can colour in. But even if you don't have those, just put a pile of blank envelopes out there. And let the children decorate them and put their name on them. And then... Adults can choose one of those envelopes and put some money in and put it in the offering. And they can go and tell the child, I chose your envelope today for my offering. Thank you for making it beautiful. Mm. It's good to involve children in the scripture reading as we did today. And it's really good if we can plan ahead for that. Mm. So rather than giving a child the scripture reading at the last moment and say, oh, can you just read this for us? Choose someone who can work with that child and mentor them into presenting the scripture. To meet with them and say, let's read this. Let's read it together and what do you understand? Tell me what you understand. And to discuss it with them. Because quite often children read things and they don't really understand what they mean. But if someone is there working with them, asking them about it, talking about what it means, it helps them to grow spiritually. There was a boy and he was asked to read a scripture reading from Isaiah. And he was in a church where they used this, this program for helping the children to do the scripture reading. Mm. And the children could choose how they wanted to present the scripture. Mm. Some would just read it, some might draw some pictures to accompany it. And this boy read a passage from Isaiah. And he said, wow, these are the words of God. I need to look like God. Because I'm speaking his words. And so the, the person working with him said, well, what do you think God looks like? And this little boy said, I think he's like, he's covered in gold and gold hann, chains hann, hann and allur, jewels. And so the person working with him thought, oh, this is going to be a little interesting. Ja, þetta, <laughs> this little boy, you know, like covered in jewels and gold and things. Allur, allur, uh, <laughs> og, og and so he said, let's read it a little more. And the person working with this boy um, helped him to explore it more. He said, let's read down a few more verses and see what it says. And as they read down more, it said, I am the Lord God, your creator. And the little boy said, oh, I'm creator God. Maybe that's a bit different. And so he said, I want, to, I want to dress like I'm the creator God. And he got his mum to find him a green jacket like grass. And she sewed on it like flowers and leaves and animals and sun and things. Mm. And so he had like this creation jacket. And he said, this morning, I'm going to read the scripture to you. And these are the words of the creator God to you. And this is why I'm dressed like this today. And that child had a much deeper understanding of what he was saying. Because someone had helped him to understand it more. So we can make use of the things that we do normally in our church service to, have the, to help the children grow most spiritually. Mm. 
So how can we involve children in the sermon? So, mm. so even if you're having a more regular sermon than we had today, mm. we can invite children to help us tell the sermon or take part in illustrations. Mm. Use the five senses. And invite them to come and smell and taste things that are in a part of your sermon. Or if you're having a PowerPoint presentation, you can hide something on the pictures and see if they can count how many are there. Mm. Try and find some way that involves them in the sermon because otherwise they will switch their minds off and they won't learn how to listen to it. Mm. 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 Sometimes he put the children's story in the middle of the sermon time to show that it's an illustration of the sermon. Mm. A pastor from another country came to our church one week. And he was preaching about the potter. And he called me up a few days before and he said, Karen, I want you to make a huge amount of flour and salt Play-Doh. And he said, I want every child to have a piece as big as their fist. So he told them a children's story and he gave them a lump of Play-Doh. Mm -hmm. He said, I want you to make something out of this that tells us how much God loves you. Mm. Or that helps us understand God's love. And you know, the children, they were so engrossed the whole way through the sermon. I can't even remember what the sermon was about. I know it was about the potter, but I couldn't tell you his main point. But I, I can remember that those children loved making something out of the play day. And after the service, they laid them out on a table. And they stood by them and they told people, I made this because. And this shows you how much Jesus loves you. And it was amazing. They, they preached their own sermons afterwards. And you know there were some grown-ups there. Give me a little bit, please. <coughs> So, so the, the grown-ups, the children would only give them like tiny bits. But the grown-ups were sitting there listening to the sermon, making things as well. Mm. Because quite a lot of us will actually learn better when we're doing something with our hands. We can listen better. Mm. And so just something simple really transformed that service for the children. So some children are quieter, they're not musical, they, they won't come to the front, but they're creative. So we can use the art to illustrate scripture readings, the songs, even the sermon illustrations. They can design bulletin covers and make banners and things for church. We did one church service and the teenagers, they made a, a little movie to show in the middle. So the pastor gave them a theme and said, create a movie for five minutes based on this. And it's so easy for them to do these things these days. And they felt involved. 
They enjoyed doing it. And they also have to think deeply, what does this topic mean to me? How can we do something with this for everybody else? So I wonder what you can do in your church. Um, if sometimes I get people together in groups and give them one aspect of the church service and ask them to think of ten ideas. But I just want you to turn to someone near you for a little while and think about ideas that you could use in this church from what you've learned today. And I don't know your church. Maybe you're doing amazing things every week, things that I can learn from and share with others. So please come and tell me if you are, because I, I go around Europe sharing this message. Because at the TD, it's really important that we help churches to understand the need to connect our worship with the next generations. I don't know what it's like here, but I know all over Europe, the church is dying. It's growing older and older. And and if we're, if we're going to survive and grow, we need a church that is younger and younger. So just take a few minutes to talk to people near you about what you could do here in this church. We'll just give you a few minutes to do that, and then if you like, you can share some of your best ideas with us. And then we'll have a couple of things to finish up with. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. It's good to hear so many ideas coming. Seems that you could be here for a while sharing even more ideas. <laughs> But I wonder if your group had a special idea you'd like to share with the rest of us. We can talk more about them while you're having lunch, perhaps. But what ideas would you like to share right now? This one over here. So, well, I'm just going to speak in English. So. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> so, we were thinking maybe to have the, the preacher tell the serm, title of his sermon, because we don't always have the title of the sermon in the bulletin. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, we did. And then the... You know, the kids can choose a word, a, an important word from that title, not the or and, but, you know, love or God or something, and try to keep track of how often the pastor says that word hmm. from the title of his sermon. Thank you. That's, that's something really simple, but it's useful. Yes. Yeah, that's the title of the word. It's not just Mjög ákveðið eins að byrja barnið kannski mánuð áður að lesa biblíuversi sem að verður þá valið þann kvíldadaginn og byrja kannski barnið um að teikna eitthvað upp úr því sem það er að lesa og það sér eitthvað að myndi teikna mynd og svo þegar að kæmi að guðþjónustunni þá er mér snöðu að hafa kannski setja myndinu sem barnið teiknaði upp og glæru and you have the powerpoint for the picture drawn Thank you. Yes, that's it's planning ahead. I think makes it a lot easier to be intentional about it. 
Thank you. Já, ég ætla eiginlega að segja svipað og Vigdís en við sem Íslendingar við eigum þetta vandamál við að etja að vera óskipulögð þannig að ég myndi segja að það væri allavega mjög góð framför ef við værum skipulögð eina viku fram í tíman það geti kannski verið byrjun byrjun að marka mig og að þá til dæmis sá sem að stjórnar eins og ég held að Vigdís að vera svolítið að íar að verði þá í sambandi við alla sem að taka þátt en svo langa með að spyrja hvort að þú vitir með prestin í bandaríkjunum sem hafði það markmið að allir ætti að fara heim vitandi að Guð elskaðu og einhver einn var það skipulagt svona alveg með einhver nöfn eða var þetta svona menning í kirkjunni? Hann hjálpaði þeim að skilja bara í guðþjónustur sjálfi, þá gerði hann hlé og útskýrði það sem verið að gera. So every sermon it needs to be something there that lets people know how much God loves them. Og í hverju guðþjónustur þá sína hversu guð elskar þá. And then there'd be a connection time in the service where they would talk to someone they didn't know about just something simple that had happened in their life and show care for each other. Og síðan í síðar þá í Guðþjónastiðin þá tjáðum eins og um eitthvað í þessum dúr gagvart næsta manni eða svo til að sína það að það er samhýgð. So he might say in Romans 12, 15 it says rejoice with those who rejoice. Í Rómverum er 12, 15 þá segir fagnum við þeim sem fagna. So he'd say tell someone something that made you happy this week. Segði einhverjum það sem var því til ána í vikunni. And the person who is listening needs to respond with rejoicing. And so sem með tekur þinn bóðskap, hann sýnir jákvæð viðbröð. Or you might share a sad thing, mourn with those who mourn. This is something sad that happened this week. And syrgi með þeir sem syrgja. And the other person shows care and concern and maybe prays for them. And við komandi þá sýnir það á móti að hann honum er ekki sama. It only takes a, a few moments, but that person feels they have a connection that cares. Þetta tekur örstund en, en þetta byggir upp tengslin. Anything else before we just close? Þeir kom eira. Þank ég. I think that one of the most principal things in our church er part of the show fair. It is the uh, worship, the offering worship. And even, even uh, us that are adults, we forget. Even we forget to bring our offering to, to God in our worship as adults. Mm -hmm. The fight and offerings. And I think that children, when they are participating in the gathering the offerings, it will help them and even us as adults. Thank you. Yes, I think that's important. We can use the offering to share times of joy. People can share a, a story of thankfulness while the offering is being collected perhaps as well, and to, to do it joyfully. In, in England there are some churches that are Ghanaian, and they will dance up the aisle to put money in the offering. Adventist Ghanaian church. Það er einnig í okkar kirkjum sem hún nefndi hérna að það sem eru svona kemur frá öðrum menningar heimi að þá eru menn dansandi hér upp í kring að þeirra hætti. So finally as the children are coming in, every time a child leaves church, 
with a positive experience, he or she is more likely to choose to become a disciple of Jesus. And every Sabbath has an impact on every child and young person for eternity. It can have a positive effect or it can have a negative effect and we need to choose what we want. Because this is what we want them to experience. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you that you love us and you love our children and young people and everyone in this church. Pray that you'll help us to be the kind of church that brings all of us closer to you and to each other every single week. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. God bless you.